Hi folks, HR Funk here with a good old fashioned firearms review. It's only been a couple of months since I made a review video, but it seems like a lot longer. In any case, today's video starts off with a little bit of a story. Back in 1985, Private First Class HR Funk was 19 years old and he was a newly assigned Marine to the Provost Marshal's office of Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point, North Carolina. Now back around that same time, PFC Funk started noticing in the firearms magazines of the day articles and references to something called the 10 millimeter auto cartridge. This cartridge always intrigued PFC Funk and his understanding at the time was the only pistol that it was being chambered in back in the mid 1980s was a modified 1911 being manufactured by Colt and they called it their Delta Elite. Unfortunately for PFC Funk, the price of the Delta Elite was far beyond his means at the time. So much as he lusted for a Delta Elite, he was never able to actually acquire one. Now, many years later, PFC Funk was no longer in the Marine Corps, <laughs> and he happened across a used Smith & Wesson Model 1076, which at the time he was able to purchase, and so began his foray into the 10 millimeter world. Even so, that allure of the 1911 chambered for the 10 millimeter cartridge was still there and stayed with him for many more years. More recently, as in within the last year or so, I've happened across a couple of Colt Delta Elites of current manufacture, and while nowadays I could probably afford them, the price tag is still pretty high. So because of that, I've never actually added one to my collection. Then, a few weeks ago, I was perusing a website for a local firearms distributor, and I noticed that particular store, or that shop, had a Lipsy's exclusive Rock Island Armory 1911 that was chambered for the 10mm cartridge. That pistol seemed very interesting, it had a lot of great features, and it retailed for about half the price of the Colt Delta Elite. Well, that firearm is now this firearm, which is part of my collection, and it's going to be the subject of today's review. Now, as many of you already know, I'm a lifelong fan of the 1911 pistol. So you might be wondering what it is about the 10 millimeter version specifically that made me want one for so many years. Basically, it was the idea of the cartridge itself. The idea of having a cartridge that at top loads was very close to the ballistics of the 41 Magnum cartridge, but that was designed for a semi-auto pistol seemed very appealing to me. And that's the main reason I wanted one for so many years. And as I said a little while ago, when I purchased the 1076, which now I've had for seven or eight years, that was a big step in that direction and I very much liked that pistol, but still I wanted the 1911. And this is a good one. This is my Lipsy's exclusive Rock Island Armory 1911 chambered as I said for the 10 millimeter cartridge and I'm going to talk about this pistol in depth but I'm not going to review the basic 1911 pistol. There are many many videos including some of mine as well as books and magazine articles and all types of information out there about the basic 1911 pistol if you're interested in it and you don't know all the history and all the specifics of the design, definitely go back and research that. But in this review, I'm going to talk about the individual characteristics of the Rock Island Armory pistol and how it differs slightly from the traditional 1911 platform. And before it's all said and done, we'll head out to the range and see how the new pistol performs. Now, for any of you who are not familiar with the Rock Island Armory pistols, they are manufactured in the Philippines, but the U.S. component is headquartered in Pahrump, Nevada, which some of you old Midnight Shift Art Bell fans might remember was nearby where he lived. He made several references to it. In any case, the 1911 that is manufactured by Rock Island Armory is called their FS Ultra. FS standing for full size. And this particular one is manufactured from 4140 Ordnance Steel and it is a Series 70 style pistol which means there is no firing pin block manufactured into this pistol. 
Some of you who don't care for the Series 80 firing pin block because of a belief that it adversely affects trigger quality will be happy to hear that this is a Series 70. The Rock Island pistols are fully CNC machined and the machining both inside and out on the FS Ultra is very good. The finish on this pistol also is a flat dark earth Cerakote as you can see and overall it is very good. I have noticed a couple of small flaws and I'll see if I can find these. In the finish of the pistol and this might not show up here in the video but there are a couple of very minor there's one there I believe flaws in the finish here on the bottom of the frame of the pistol. I'm not particularly concerned about that. This pistol is going to get many more bumps and bruises on it, or character marks as I like to call them, as it's used in years to come. But if you're someone who absolutely insists on pristine, perfect finish on your firearm, and you look at purchasing one of these, make sure you inspect it very closely to make sure that the finish meets with your approval. Now at the price range of the FS Ultra, as I said, I can live with a few minor finish defects. If this were a Colt Delta Elite or another pistol that was considerably more expensive, far north of $1,000 that is, and there were defects in the finish, I might be a little bit more upset about that. But for the FS Ultra, that's fine with me. And I just went back and looked under a stronger light. And again, I don't know if this is going to show up. There's one right here, just a minor defect in the finish. And there's another one right here that you can just barely see, but the Cerakote is fairly thin in those two places. Moving on, and starting at the top of the pistol and working our way down, we can see that the FS Ultra, or at least this version of the FS Ultra, has very good sights. The rear sight is fully adjustable for windage and elevation and you can see it has the two white dots. The front sight, if I can move it up here so you can see it, has a very nice square profile for precision shooting, but it also has the red fiber optic to help make it easier to acquire that front sight for rapid target acquisition. The FS Ultra also has a skeletonized commander style hammer as well as a skeletonized trigger. It features G10 grips, and these grips feel very good in the hand. I've had one other pistol that had the G10 style grips on, and I really like these. They really help to lock the pistol into your grip. It also has what's becoming very common on a lot of 1911s these days, that being the extended beaver tail style grip safety that has the memory bump here on the bottom to help make sure that that safety is disengaged while firing. The slide stop is pretty much standard GI 1911 and the thumb safety is ambidextrous. So we do have that that you can activate with either thumb on either side of the frame. Rock Island categorizes the FS Ultra as an A2 style, 1911, and in general terms, it is in A2 configuration. However, it does have the flat mainspring housing that harkens back to the original 1911. And something I forgot to mention a moment ago about the trigger is the fact that it is adjustable for over-travel, and you can see the over-travel adjustment screw right there in the bottom cutout of the trigger. The FS Ultra features a 5 inch button rifled barrel and the barrel to slide fit is very tight. I can feel virtually no movement whatsoever as well as with the slide to frame fit that's very tight as a testament to that CNC machining that I mentioned a little while ago. There are a couple of places where the FS Ultra departs from the standard 1911 design. And one of those has to do with the fact that it is a bushingless design. You can see there is no bushing between the slide and barrel. 
In fact, the end of the barrel is cone-shaped to facilitate the lockup with the slide, and also the FS Ultra features a full-length guide rod. Now I've got to say, I'm not a big fan of full-length guide rods in 1911s. My feeling is, if John Browning didn't put one there, it probably doesn't need one. I think it just adds complexity to the disassembly process of the pistol, and also adds a little bit of weight. I would be just as happy if this was in standard 1911 configuration, but one thing I noticed was in many of the references that I saw to this particular pistol when I was researching it was the fact that it was very accurate. So if we get it out to the range and it demonstrates very good accuracy, I'll forgive it its deviation from John Browning's design. Okay folks, it's time to break out the trusty trigger pull scale and see exactly what kind of trigger Rock Island puts on the FS Ultra. Now factory specs for this pistol are for the trigger pull to be between 4 and 6 pounds. This trigger to me feels like it's on the heavy end of that spectrum, but let's see what the trigger pull gauge shows us. And that was just a hair over 7 pounds. 7 pounds, 0 0.2 ounces. Let's try another pull. Slightly lighter. That was 6 pounds, 11.9 ounces. Let's try one more. And that was 6 pounds, 13.4 ounces. So this trigger is definitely on the heavy side of that spectrum. In fact, it's exceeding their 6 pound spec just a little bit. But with some use, we might see that trigger pull weight come down. And if it doesn't, I think I can probably get this trigger tuned pretty easily and get to where it's something that I can definitely live with. When you purchase the FS Ultra pistol, it comes in Rock Islands plastic hard case. By the way, I kind of like Rock Island's logo. I think that's kind of cool with the two artillery pieces there. The pistol comes with the usual paraphernalia, beginning with a firearms lock, which in my case will never come out of that plastic bag. It comes with a manual, and a small complimentary bottle of Rock Island Armory firearms lube. One criticism I have, and Rock Island is not the only manufacturer that I could make this statement about, is the fact that the pistol comes with only one magazine. This is something that every time I encounter it, it kind of bugs me a little bit. If you're going to do any amount of shooting at all with your firearm, you're going to need more than one magazine. And I'm not sure why manufacturers ever ship a firearm with just one magazine. Two would be nice, and really I don't think three would be an unreasonable expectation when you're purchasing a brand new firearm. Placing the FS Ultra on the official Cabela scale, we can see that it's weighing in right at two and a half pounds, right dead on at 40 ounces. And that is with the unloaded magazine in place, but the pistol itself is coming in right at the weight where you would expect a full-size all-steel 1911. So that's pretty much it for the shop review, folks. At this point, the FS Ultra has been cleaned and lubed, so let's take it off to the range and see how it performs. And just like that, folks, I've arrived here on the range with my new Rock Island Armory 1911 chambered for the 10mm cartridge. In just a few minutes, I'm going to start to put the new pistol through my standard handgun testing battery to see what kind of performance I can eke out of it, or maybe we'll see what kind of performance it can eke out of me. Either way, the test kicks off with a 30-foot standing slow-fire accuracy drill, and as soon as I get things set up and ready to go, we'll kick that drill off. I have a few different types of ammunition I'm going to be using for today's test. I'm going to start things off with cellular and bellet, 180 grain full metal jacket ammunition. I also have some Blazer 200 grain FMJs. Now Rock Island Armory only warrants the FS Ultra to function 
with brass cased ammunition, but I want to run some of the aluminum cased blazer through just to see how it's going to do. And then I also have some of my own hand loads that I want to run through the pistol before we get all done today. And I'm all set up back at 30 feet for that accuracy drill, folks. So let's see how the new pistol does. And not bad accuracy at all from 30 feet. I've got four shots in just over an inch. That's probably an inch and a quarter, center to center. I had one shot that I pulled low, and I'm sure this was me. But otherwise, that's all looking good. The group is pretty nicely centered. So I think we'll go on from here and see how the other drills look. Folks, I did have a minor malfunction on that 30-foot accuracy drill. The slide did not lock back after the last round was fired from the pistol. At first, I thought maybe I accidentally loaded six rounds into the magazine, but it was empty when I checked it. And I'm not sure if that's going to be an issue or if maybe that was just something with the first few rounds out of the pistol that it had to get out of its system. Either way, I'll keep an eye on that as I shoot through the rest of the drills. For the next drill, I've replaced my bullseye target with a human silhouette and I've moved back to a distance of 50 feet. I've also loaded the pistol to its full capacity. I have eight rounds in the magazine and one round in the chamber. We'll see how the pistol does on this drill from this distance. And that time, the slide locked back just fine. So maybe that was just something the pistol had to get out of its system on that first drill. And there we go. There's our 50 foot accuracy. I was speeding up my trigger pull just a little bit. And what I'm noticing is with the brand new pistol, that trigger is just a little bit heavy. And I was tending to pull my shots a little low and to the left. And I think that's really just a symptom of me getting used to the trigger more so than any reflection on the mechanical accuracy of the pistol. And I think what's going to happen as I shoot this more and more is we're going to see this group shrink and probably move closer to the center. Just to test that theory, I'm going to try three more shots from 50 feet and I'm going to slow down my trigger press and really try to concentrate on my sights and see if I'm right and the accuracy that I'm seeing on that first group of nine shots is more a reflection of me getting used to the trigger than it is any issue with the pistol. And it looks like maybe the pistol is hitting just a bit to the left with this S&B ammunition. So I'm going to give my rear sight an adjustment and we'll see if we can bring this over a little bit. Folks, I made an adjustment to the rear sight. I moved it slightly to the right. Let's see if that makes any difference in the point of impact on the target.
And I would say that sight adjustment did the trick quite nicely. All right, folks, time to speed things up a little bit. I've moved up to a distance of 20 feet from the target. From here, I'm going to fire three consecutive failure drills. That's two shots to the body and one shot to the head in rapid succession. I've also changed ammunition. I've switched over to the 200 grain Blazer full metal jackets. So we'll see how the pistol does with the different ammunition and also how it performs on this drill. And everything looked good in the failure drill, except I managed to blow the headshot on that second series of three shots. And I know exactly why this happened, by the way. There was a definite difference in the recoil impulse with the pistol while firing that 200 grain blazer ammunition. And the second time through, I did not really allow for that. In fact, it just basically caught me off guard. And I ended up jerking that. That was a bad trigger pull on my part. That's not a reflection on the pistol or the ammunition. In fact, the pistol is doing very well. This is just shooter error. And I've now moved up to a distance of 15 feet from the target, and I'm set up for a multiple adversary drill. In this drill, I'm going to shoot one shot at the target on the right, three shots at the target on the left, and then two more shots at the target on the right, all in rapid succession. I'm still shooting that 200 grain Blazer full metal jacket ammunition. So we'll see how the new pistol does on this drill. And that drill looked very good. All the shots are in the proper place on both targets. The three shots on this target are all within probably less than one inch center to center, even shooting at that shot tempo. I can't really tell which one of these shots are the three that I fired on that drill, but they're all clustered in the same group. And this cluster right here seems to be getting more and more holes. So I suspect my three shots from that group are probably somewhere in there. Folks, it's been a long time since we've seen the water bottle Desperados, but sure enough, while I've been testing out my new Rock Island Armory 10 millimeter, a couple of them have snuck onto the scene. I'm gonna take them on in just a minute from a distance of 15 yards, and we'll see just how they like that 10 millimeter cartridge. I'd say that 200 grain blazer ammunition got their attention pretty well. Folks, it's been a long time since we tried to find out if a new pistol is a 20 foot tack driver, but that's exactly what I'm going to do with the Rock Island 10 millimeter. I've got a tack set up in the target. I'm back to a distance of 20 feet. I have three rounds loaded in the magazine. Let's see how it does. Oh, just over top. But I still have two more tries. <laughs> yes, the Rock Island Armory FS Ultra 10 millimeter is a 20 foot tack driver. And there we go, folks. I finished up the last few rounds on my CTS steel target. I've got to say, I think the RIA 10 millimeter FS Ultra, by the way, that's a long name. I think I'm just gonna call this my 10 millimeter 1911, acquitted itself very well in my testing. In fact, the only bobble it had was right out of the gates with that very first magazine where it failed to lock open after the last round. But since that, it's been 100% flawless. 
even running the Blazer aluminum cased ammunition, that Rock Island doesn't even guarantee that it'll function properly with. So I think all in all the pistol did very well and I'm extremely happy with it. And that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, be sure you forward those to me. Don't forget, if you order anything from Optics Planet, use my discount code, which is the same as my channel name, and that is... And if you use that discount code, you'll get a 5% off on anything you purchase in that order from Optics Planet. So that's it for today. Hope to see you next time. And until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.